Okay, so let's get started. We're using the Bernat Softy Chunky Line today, and we are using a size J hook, which is a 6.0 millimeter hook, as we've talked about already. So just put your yarn aside, and let's start off with our slip knot. We are going to work from the center of the square outward. So let's begin. Let's do our slip knot. Okay, and we just want to wrap it around our finger twice. Be a little bit generous on the tail that you want because you're going to want to bury it in there so you can't see it. So this is the front and the back. Let's take the back over the front, just like so, and kind of hold it down. And then using your other fingers here, stabilize it uh, just to hold it. And then just pick this up and pull it over your finger and now slip in your hook. So pull everything a little bit snug. Don't be reefing on it that it's really too tight. Now this never counts as one in any crochet project and what I want you to do is I want you to chain four. So this is not one. So let's go. So pushing your hook back, grabbing the material, pulling it through for one, do the same, two, do the same, three, do the same, and four. So now we need to create a circle because at this point we only have a line. So what we have to do is slip in our hook into the very first part of the, the chain. So what we want to do is just slip in your hook and before you get too carried away and jump ahead of me, what I want you to do is pull down the material like it's a, a U-shape, like a horseshoe. Pull it down and I want you to get the straggler in check. So I want you to pull that down as well. And when you're holding it, hold that straggler down with that side of the crochet or with your side of the chain just like so and now grab your material and pull it through and by holding it now you know exactly where your center point is so let's go on with your next step so moving along what we need to do is we need to create the center point just like here so we're on this line right here not this one so right there so let's uh, begin to do that so we need to chain up three so grabbing the material pull through one pull it through two pull through three for three now that actually counts as one of the double crochet that's working its way around. They say it's a count of 16. That's because they're including the actual chain. So holding down the straggler on top of the line, just on the one side, okay, we want to trap that straggler into position. So let's double crochet 15 times going into the center. And what I normally do is I just put a whack in there, and by whack I mean just a lot. And just holding down the straggler on top of the line, it actually seals that straggler into position. And if it's the straggler's too long, you can safely cut whatever's left sticking out of it at the end and not worry about cutting it too short to the, to the knot that it's actually going to make your project fall apart. So just uh, continue to put in there. We need a total of 15 double crochets and the chain acts as a double crochet, so it's actually a total of 16. So let's keep on going. So let's double crochet ourselves and you're just kind of rotating and as you're rotating you're making sure that straggler is kind of staying on top so that you can continue to seal that bad boy into position. Okay, so keep on going. And where you think you got enough and if you want to keep count I find it hard to keep count to 16 when I'm double crocheting especially if you're watching TV so we to pull the chain apart so that's one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen and that's two more two more this is 15 and then 16 and now we want to create a slip a slip stitch so what we just need to do this is the chain that came out when we started we want to put it into the one that's on the top so in, to pulling the material through and through, and therefore you have the starting point. So let's uh, move on to your next video. So now we're going to create what is called like almost like a petal area, but in actual fact we're now creating a circle, and that is really easy to actually do. It's more simpler than you realize. So let's begin again, and we want to chain up four this time. And the reason why we're chaining up four, I'll explain it in a second. So one, two, three and four okay and now we want to go into the very next stitch available which is right there for a double crochet okay and the reason why we went four is that we need to create the gap that is in between the petal just like so so in order to do that if you would have done two or, or only chained up three and then double crocheted you wouldn't be creating a gap that makes it separate like that so every time you get a double crochet done chain one and then go into the very next stitch 
okay? So chain one and double crochet into the very next stitch as you go around. And we wanna do that completely all the way around. And I explained to you earlier upstairs that, you know, I do everything in stages. So what I would do, because this is the final part of the green before switching to the white, I would have done a whack of these um, circles at the same time because your mind is prepared to count, it's prepared to make the same uh, steps in your hands and it's a lot easier than it is to somehow change your process every time with the, the different things that you need to do with the square. So chaining one in between each one of the... So you need an actual total of 16, okay? And you need to make sure, you have to, have to, have to count and make sure you have those 16 before finalizing this rotation. If you do not finalize it, you may end up with one extra or one short, and then when you go to do your white step, you'll realize it, and then you'll have to backtrack. So it's easier to count at the end of this thing. Now you'll find probably the next one is actually your last, because I've done like 49 of these, well actually probably 50. So this is your last one. So you'll notice it's kind of like falling away, so let's do a count, so one, Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, and sixteen. And because this is the final double crochet, you have to chain one in order to make it consistent. And so just work your way up. So one, two, and three. Grab the third one up on the chain that you started with in order to keep the distance consistent. Okay? So now we want to finish off the green. So just grabbing your fancy dancy scissors over your hand just like so. And now this is what I do. Okay, so I pull the material out, okay, and now I push it back behind the material and I put the hook right in the actual gap itself that's right beside it. And now using my two fingers, I'm holding the yarn so that it doesn't all the way come out. So I'm still holding it slightly back here. I pulled it toward the front and what I want to do is I want to feed that little straggler through that loop to create like a knot and then I want to pull it snug. So now the remainder of these loops, I always pull the material back through that same hole, and now I want to work that material into the top stitches as I'm working away. So that, that was the top stitcher there. Now I have a gap, so just wrap it around the gap. Okay, and now let's go in the top of the next stitch. And because the white is actually going to be grabbing onto this area, you don't have to worry about this uh, too much at all because you will never see this as part of your square. Voila. So you can just leave that little straggler on and we can fix that later. And uh, therefore the center point is now done of this particular thing. So it doesn't look quite the same, does it? It looks completely circular and we're going to change it as we switch on to the white. So let's get started with your next part. So moving right along, we're now going to add the white in here. And you'll notice that there's a definite look of one side to another. And you'll notice that it's slightly a bowl shape. And so you want to continually, you can switch this around and start going from the other side if you want to be that creative. It's up to you. But all of this is done on one side and the other side looks completely different. So it doesn't really matter where you finish it off because it's a consistent circle that you can just start the white in any one of the spots. So let's do that. So let's get your slip knot going. So round your finger twice, the back over the forward, the back up again. Okay, and so now we wanna pull it snug. So we can just stick your hook in any one of the gaps along the circle. It doesn't really matter. I try to avoid going into the same spot that I finished off of, so I just go somewhere else but it doesn't make a difference exactly where you put it. So grabbing the straggler and the yarn, you're gonna pull it through the hole, and then I use my finger to pull that slip knot up and over, okay? And now that counts as one. So grab the straggler and the yarn again, and pull it through like a, like a chain. That counts as two. And if you still have more straggler, just pull it through again, okay? And so we wanted a chain three so let me just uh, retry that. So we just want to put that through. So you want a total of three chains like you normally would. And we can trim this straggler on afterward. But what I would strongly recommend is that instead of uh, trimming it later, just go down in because we want to create, this is one of the chains. So we want to create two double crochets into the same gap that you just started that in. So just going into the same hole, okay? Put the straggler down on the line 
and wrap the material through it like that. Just pull it through and then two and two and that was a double crochet. So if you still have more straggler just do it again. So just making sure it's trapped in and you want a total of three. So the chaining counter does one and then two double crochets. We now then want to chain one and now this is where it kind of gets really interesting like the petal shape you see everything's in groups of twos. So now you just chained one so just jump over two of the actual spokes as per se and just jump over and put in three double crochets. Okay, just like so. So now we want to chain one again. Okay, and this is where we change the circle to an actual square in this point. So now we want to jump over two more spokes and this will be the corner piece. Now you'll see that this is where we finished off the other material. We want to kind of trap that in a position as much as we can, making sure that the white is wrapping around that string that we uh, weaved in the edge and that helps it really from falling apart later. So now that is considered a corner, so I call it the 323 configuration. So three double crochets, two chains, and three double crochets, and let's go three more into the same hole. And that's causing it to turn a corner. Just like so. So now we want to chain one again, and I call it the runway. Then the runway for me is any point of a granny square where you're not actually turning. So that's so we're gonna put three double crochets. Okay, and now we're gonna chain one and we're now back on a corner again. So jumping over two on the spokes and just double crochet again for your three to three configuration. So three uh, double crochets. two chains and three double crochets into the same hole for another corner piece. Okay, chain one and now going on the runway which is the piece in between the corners jumping over two again and double crocheting three more times. and now chain one and back onto another corner so we want to jump over another two one and two two three configuration to make the square and now we want to chain one again and we're in the center again and this is why it was so important that you made sure you had 16 so we're putting the three uh, double crochets into the spot and it was so important that you actually had the 16 in there uh, because you'll end up with an odd number at this point if you don't now we're going to finish off and so we chain one and when we started we started with three double crochets and then three because this part is the starting of a corner like so. So this, when we come back around, we're finishing off that same corner. So we're three double crochets inside that corner. And then to finish the corner, right, it's not complete yet because you need to put two chains. And now going, slipping your, it's called the slip stitch, just slip your hook into the top of the, the first chain that we did, pulling it through and through and therefore you have that done. So let's move on to your second round of white. Okay, so we just finished here and now we're doing the second rotation of the white and this is like it wouldn't be normal crochet or granny square. So let's chain up your three. So one, two, and three. And now this is part, remember what I said, we just finished off this, this corner over here. So we always start on the one side of the corner, work our way around and finish it off on the corner. So just double crochet going into the same gap that you just made and put two double crochets. And so with the chaining of the three and the two double crochets, that actually equals three. So now we want to chain one and work our way along the runway. So where there's a gap, just put in three double crochets. Okay, and now we are still in the runway, so chain one 
in into the next hole. Okay, and now we are on a corner, so chain one, and do your three, two, three configuration. So three double crochets, two chains, and three double crochets. Okay, now we're back on the runway again, so let's chain one and going across. So that was three in that one, chain one, three in the next one. Granny squares are really, really simple to do. And uh, we're now back on the corner, so chain one and going into the three, two, three configuration for the next corner. So that was three double crochets, two chains, three double crochets. Chain one, going on to the runway. So again, this is a three in a row. Okay, chain one, going into the next one for another three. Chain one, we're back on another corner. So how do you know when you're actually at the last corner? It's very obvious because the next row is actually going to be in your way so you won't be able to cross it without knowing about it. So that's corner, so that was three, two, and three configuration. You need those two chains in order to make that corner successful and if you do three then it gets pretty sloppy so if you did the three, three, three. So we're back on the runway and this is the final before coming back to the other side. And we we're gonna we're gonna cast off at the end of this line as well. Because we're now ready to reinsert the green back into position. So three. And then chain one going into the next one, which is part of the runway. So with every rotation of your granny square, you're actually growing it significantly on all sides, which actually make your project grow pretty fast. So we're on the final. This is where we started over here. We're on the final, completing the final corner. So we're going to put in three. Okay. And now to finish it completely is chain two. And we want to do a slip stitch into the top of the one that we started with. Pulling it through and through. So let's begin to cast off. I always just turn over my hand, put in my fancy dancy scissors, and I pull out the yarn, and this is exactly what I do. I flip it over toward the back of the project, and now I use my two fingers and I pinch it, and I pull in the yarn underneath so that I continually have that loop up there. So it's now back through the front, and I want to push it back through that actual loop again causing it to rotate around itself. So it's kind of securing itself onto itself. I will then stick in my hook into the actual corner, pulling it back out. And now what we want to do, the whole point when you're going to cut it is that you want to make sure that your straggler at least gets past the first gap along the runway. So let's, uh, so I pushed it back. We're going to go in the top of this stitch here and we're just going to pull the material through it, throw it back over, next stitch, pull it through, pull it back through and now what I need you to do is just wrap it around this actual gap area itself and because you're working with the green up into the gapping areas the green when it goes into that spot is really really going to secure this loose straggler into position and because the, the way that you tied it in the beginning here this thing will not unravel so you can either I would wait before you start trimming these things and wait just until your final square you get the green and then you can just be safely starting to trim any uh, loose strings as per se. So let's move on to the next part. Okay, so now we want to reintroduce the green to go back around the outside just like we did before. So let's uh, start off with a slip knot. Okay, so wrapping around your finger, back over the forward, and then back pushing up and around. 
and slip in your hook again and pull it snug. So what I want you to do is that this is where we finished off and the reason why you can see this and I've addressed this in a video before when you're finishing off it looks tighter than the rest and but for, the neat thing about it is because this is part of a larger blanket this whole seam area actually will be hidden so it really doesn't matter so much but I do it for my own security is that I never start my rotation on this particular corner I always choose something else so just rotate it to whatever you feel now just slip in your hook into the actual corner slot of any other corner okay and now taking your straggler and your yarn putting it onto your hook from behind and pulling it through and using your fingers pull the slip knot over okay so that was one so we want a total of three chains so let's grab in the material and the straggler again pulling it through for two okay and if there's more straggler you can pull it through you will find after doing quite a few squares that you will have nailed down exactly how long that straggler needs to be in order to get it to look like it is right now instead of having to worry about burying it so again, this is just like a regular corner uh, granny square we're going to start off. That is also considered one. The chaining is considered one double crochet. So this is one double crochet added and two. So the chaining and the two actually equal three, if that makes any sense. And now we're on the runway. So chain one, going into the next spot for three double crochets in a row. So make sure you get your square completely done before you start trimming any strings. Um, it just will make your life easier. So we're coming up to the corner where we fastened the last coloring off. And uh, so chaining one. So here's where it is. And because we wrapped around that gap, when I go to put this stuff in, see, it's going to trap it even more with this string. So you can be assured that it won't unravel on itself because it's really because you know crochet is like knots really endless knots so let's chain one going into the corner for a three two three configuration one and two and then another three So just because I'm changing the colors exactly where I am, you have the power to change the colors even more if you want to. If you just want your centers to be a different color, you can just use the same techniques of fastening on and off um, like I've already demonstrated. So just because I'm doing the coloring scheme this way doesn't mean that you have to as well. This is just a standard uh, granny square really. It's not, a, it's not really a traditional one because it's got a, uh, a center that is a circle. But um, you, it's just a standard template, so it's just something that you can continually play with. And especially if you have scrap yarn, it might be kind of cool to change even all of the, the lines to be different from each other if that appeals to you or not. So we're on the corner again for a 3 2 3 configuration. And back in the corner. You will find that each square, and I, it turned out for me that almost every square cost me about 15 minutes to 20 minutes of my time. And uh, it all depends how good the movie was at that moment if I looked up during that square making. But I found it did go faster if you do everything in sections, just like I've explained earlier. So do a lot of the circles at the same time. You know, put the circles down and then come do another set of something else and then come back and maybe do the white area and then uh, put it down and then come back and do it and uh, it kind of makes it a lot easier when you have many of your squares in different processes so that if you get bored of going around the borders all the time you can do something different with your squares up until the final end of your project back on the corner again we are doing our 323 three configuration two chains and back in again for the final three Okay, and you can obviously tell where the starting and the stopping point of this particular rotation is because of the color change back on the runway again. So overall though this is probably one of the most coolest blankets I've ever done. I've not really done much granny square work. Um, I've only done like tutorial size stuff that is just a sample so I never really get an opportunity to make very many granny square blankets because I just don't have time. Um, 
always filming something along the way. So we're coming up to the end of this rotation. Okay, chain one, and this is part of the, the, the starting of the, the corner, so we have to use this as the final the one we're going in. So this is the final three to finish off this side of the corner. And of course, to make the corner complete, chain two, one and two, and then sticking your hook into the top, pulling it through and through. And now let's cast off. So just taking your fancy dancy scissors, cutting it over your hand, pulling it out. And just like we did on the white, push it backward and holding it, stabilizing it so that you can continually have a loop holding around your finger, grabbing the material and throwing it through that loop, just like so. And now grab the material, pulling it through. And now go into the top stitch, pulling it through. And we want to do the same concept that we've done before. We just want to continually work your way through the stitches and at least get past the first gap so that when you go to do the seaming of your, your granny squares together, that the seam will actually catch. And so then this will not become a loose string for you in the end. So there you go, and that is that part of the tutorial. So you can go onto the sheets and change your colors as many times as you want to, and then move along to actually fastening them together. Good luck, and we'll talk to you soon.